Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt with The Movement System. Today we're gonna to be talking about the functions of growth hormone. We're gonna go through 10 different functions of growth hormone. We're gonna talk about the physiology associated with that and how it relates to training. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna think about with growth hormone is that it's gonna decrease our utilization of glucose. Now, why is that? Let's think about the example of you ate a meal and then you fall asleep and your growth hormone's increasing. We know growth hormone increases at night, so what's gonna happen? That's gonna to cause a mobilization of fat, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but basically that mobilization of fat into the bloodstream is gonna decrease our reliance on glucose as a fuel source. So anytime the growth hormone increases, we don't have to use glucose quite as much. When we also think about that, we're gonna think about glycogen. And glycogen is just a polymer of glucose. It's just the short-term storage of glucose in our muscles and our liver. So glycogen is formed by basically just a combination of a bunch of glucose molecules. So when we think about glycogen, it basically has an anti-insulin effect, meaning it doesn't allow insulin to do its job of storing glucose as glycogen. Okay, so when we think of the role of a hormone overall, they're flowing around in the bloodstream and basically telling other things what to do. So we think about growth hormone, it's released in the anterior pituitary, it flows around in the bloodstream, and then it goes and whenever the liver picks it up, it stimulates the release of IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor one. So that release of insulin-like growth factor one can stimulate amino acid transport imp improvements as well as increases in muscle protein synthesis. Basically, you can think of it as providing a situation that's most optimal for promoting muscle protein synthesis, cell repair, and tissue growth. Okay, so going on to five and six here, we have fatty acid utilization increases and increase in lipolysis. So lipolysis is basically the breakdown of a glycerol backbone off of the fatty acid chain. So if we think about an adipocyte stored fat, so a big stored fat molecule, we have a glycerol backbone and then some fatty acid chains. If we break the fatty acid chain off the glycerol, that fatty acid chain can leave the adipocyte and it can go and break down into acetyl-CoA and be used for energy. So growth hormone actually promotes that process of lipolysis and then fatty acid utilization. So moving on to collagen synthesis and cartilage growth, these are both promoted by an increase in growth hormone. So collagen and cartilage are important for things like tendons, ligaments, and joint structures. And again, growth hormone is gonna be a molecule that in the bloodstream promotes a tissue growth and a collagen growth and cartilage growth environment. All right, so an increase in growth hormone in the bloodstream helps with immune cell functioning. This is because as growth hormone moves throughout the bloodstream, it's gonna stimulate releases of other cells like T cells and B cells and cytokines. And these are all related to processes such as inflammation and repair within the immune cell. And our last function of growth hormone is actually an increase in electrolytes. Things like nitrogen, sodium, potassium, and phosphorus. So basically growth hormone has an effect on the renin angiotensin system, which regulates the electrolyte balance and the water balance within our body. So when we increase growth hormone, that regulation is going to promote a storage or a, a maintenance of the electrolytes that we have, which is again to promote an overall tissue growth environment. So to recap overall guys, a hormone is something that floats around in the bloodstream and communicates between different cells and organs. Growth hormone is one of those hormones and it floats around and it does all of these different functions. It, it decreases our reliance on glucose, it stimulates IGF-1, it increases amino acid transport and helps us promote muscle protein synthesis, it helps break down fats and move them out into the bloodstream and then use them for energy, uh, it helps us promote collagen synthesis, cartilage growth, immune cell function, and the retention of those electrolytes. All right guys, hopefully this has been helpful in improving your understanding of growth hormone. If it has, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you want more videos like this about exercise science and strength and conditioning, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can see more. And if you want to, you could join our Facebook group. I host a strength conditioning study group on Facebook, which you can search or click the link in the description below to find. And that's all about teaching strength conditioning and the physiology behind it, the training behind it, and helping to make the world stronger. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next one.